Well, we're, we're thrilled to have Father Jeff Kirby, who joins us uh, to talk about some great news along with one of his newest books titled Thy Kingdom Come, Living the Lord's Prayer in Everyday Life. Father, thanks so much for being with us today. Good to see you. Good to be on the show. Thank you. Well, you've written other books on prayer, but this one focuses on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, what made you decide to tackle this one? I, I think this book is part of an overall effort to try to retrieve some of our, our spiritual treasury. Uh, oftentimes, the Lord's Prayer, like many of us learned it while we were still learning to speak. And oftentimes, we can take it for granted and not realize the real depth that's there. So through this book, I hope to show the richness of the prayer, but also how we can live this prayer in our everyday lives. And talk, if you could, Father, uh, the Lord's Prayer given to us by Jesus himself, and uh, many consider it the perfect prayer because of that. Talk about the, the universality of our Lord's Prayer as well. I know even for Catholics, uh, they, they know it. Uh, it's something that's, uh, you know, in people's minds, and, and they, you know, whether they're Catholic or Protestant, they, they know about the Lord's Prayer. Absolutely. I think the prayer itself teaches a fundamental lesson that, that we all need to be reminded of, especially in our state of affairs today, that you know, when Jesus was asked by the apostles, Lord, teach us to pray, when he said, this is how you are to pray, he started it with our Father. That's powerful in that he identified himself with each of us. He, of course, is the Son of God by nature. We are the sons and daughters of God by adoption, by grace. And he says, our Father. So he associates himself with us and all of us together which means we are brothers and sisters to one another, which means we owe one another the respect to each other's dignity, and we owe each other a basic civility. So there's a universality of, of, of the prayer in terms of it applies to all people, and it reminds people of faith and people of goodwill of our common identity as the children of God. Now, every morning, Father, here at, at Catholic TV, I go down to the chapel very early, and I say a prayer, and I include the Our Father, some Hail Mary, so on, so on, so forth. How do we get away from just saying it just to say it? So it's an Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name, and really say it to understand it. Yeah, so the prayer itself, we can kind of begin to dissect it. So in the early church, there was clear identity, a clear realization that the prayer had seven major petitions, seven major parts. So the first three dealt with the praise of God, so, you know, God's name, God's kingdom, God's will. And then the last four dealt not only with our relationship with God, but our relationship with our neighbor. So we ask God, give us, forgive us, lead us, deliver us. And just by understanding that internal logic, that structure to the prayer, can help us to appreciate the power of each of these seven petitions and that can break down the prayer in our own minds and help us to understand it and also begin to really live it actively. In your book, you connect the prayer to everyday life. Tell us about that approach. Yeah, so at the end of each chapter, so most of the chapters follow those seven petitions of the prayer. And in each chapter, as we talk about the petition, so what does it mean biblically? What does it mean in terms of our, our tradition as Christians? But then also... Each chapter concludes with what I call a school of discipleship, which means how do we live this? So each chapter concludes with examples of people who've lived it, average people, everyday people, ordinary life. So bullet points of very specific examples. Then there's an examination of conscience, and then there's a prayer, and then there's an example of how this petition of the Lord's Prayer relates to the Beatitudes, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the principle of Christian virtues, and then the opposing vice, like what tries to rob this from us? What tries to take this glory of this particular prayer from us? So just each part of that school discipleship is really just to make, meant to break down the prayer and really apply it. So someone can say, wait a minute, th this can actually help me. This, this is actually really good stuff, <laughs> right? And really begin to take an active part in trying to, to live the prayer. What is your hope, Father, that uh, people will get out of reading this book and learning more about the prayer? I, I hope very much that people see in the Lord's Prayer a real help, a spiritual resource in what it means to be a Christian and how to approach the struggles, the difficulties, the disappointments of life, as well as the joys and triumphs of life, how to appreciate all the parts of the different ups and downs of life as the children of God. And really see that the Lord gave us this prayer to help us, to guide us 
and to show us how we are called to live as the children of God. He is the Son of God, he took on our human nature in order to show us how to live. He cried with human tears, loved with the human heart, worked with human hands, and he models for us how we are called to live. And this prayer given to us by him, this Lord's Prayer, very much guides us and gives us some direction on, on that path. Well, Father, it's always great to spend some time with you. Where can people follow your work and get a copy of the book? Yeah, so my website, frkirby.com, or uh, through the publisher, uh, Tam Books, uh, copies of the book are available. Always a pleasure, Father. Have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. It's good to be on the show. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.